Okay, moving on to uh, 2011-158. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, changing, amending, and modifying the zoning map of the zoning code of the City of Jefferson by rezoning point 93 acres from CO office commercial to C1 neighborhood commercial for land addressed as 999 Diamond Ridge, described as lot 86 of Diamonds subdivision, section four, Jefferson City, Cole County, Missouri. Uh, filling in tonight for uh, Janice McMillan is Eric Barron. Eric. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this agenda item was referred by the Planning and Zoning Commission at their meeting on February 9th. Uh, it's a, it is an existing building located on the corner of Emerald Lane and Diamond Ridge. Up on the screen is a, is a zoning map of the area. It's currently zoned for office use. It's a two-story building and part of the lower level is vacant. Uh, the property owner is wanting to lease some of that vacant space to a, a salon day spa tenant. I do have a picture of the building. Uh, the request is to rezone the property from uh, to C1 to accommodate the proposed use and the public hearing is scheduled for March 19th. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Barron tonight? Carrie? I don't have a question but a comment on this. It is uh, my ward, in fact my neighborhood right there and I was uh, impressed that the owner of this property actually went out to the uh, residences in the area and knocked on the doors and actually made sure that he spoke with and, and communicated with the neighbors so um, definitely a good example of how to uh, approach zoning in a residential area because he uh, definitely reached out to make sure there weren't any concerns of the property owners thank you all right thank you Carrie. any other comments okay moving on to 2011-159 uh, an ordinance of the city of jefferson missouri declaring certain property to be surplus and authorizing the disposal of said property mr schwartz Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the city purchased two new buses this year. They have arrived, and looking at the uh, fleet needs that we have for our buses, uh, we actually have three that we feel that we can declare surplus. Uh, they're 2004 model Freightliners, uh, all with more than 140,000 miles on them, so we are asking to have them disposed of at, at auction. Any questions for Roger? Okay, moving on, 2011-160. Uh, uh, An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, declaring certain property to be surplus and authorizing the disposal of said property. Steve Schleter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this bill would authorize uh, a washer and dryer to be declared surplus and to be used as a trade-in for a new uh, washer and dryer. Any comments of Steve? Okay, moving on to 2011-161. Uh, uh, An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Riley Chevrolet Incorporated for the purchase of police department motor vehicles. Chief Schrader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the clerk just read, this uh, bill would authorize the purchase of eight patrol cars. Um, each year uh, we replace about one-third of our marked fleet um, this year the bids were open six days ago and we had a committee of three within the police department that assessed uh, those bids and um, you have a uh, some uh, documents within the packet that describe the seven discrepancies or the seven I think uh, non-compliance issues that were identified with the Ford bid. Ford was the low bid, but we do not believe it was the best bid. Uh, those seven reasons touch on the size of the engine, power seats, front recovery hooks, the size of the tires, uh, incandescent lights versus halogen lights, uh, this color scheme, the type of um, paint versus wrapping, and then a lot of the equipment that's within that vehicle um, does not match what we requested. Um, Riley's bid does. Additionally, the Ford bid identified the Explorer as the vehicle that is, uh, this is the first year that the Ford Explorer is a pursuit rated vehicle. It's not been tested in the field and uh, 
we would much prefer other cities and counties field test that vehicle uh, so that next year we will have some data um, as we make the uh, the uh, annual assessment of vehicles and what would work best for us locally uh, all that considered um, as we look at the dollar amounts um, both of those bids there is a third bid but it was uh, about fifty thousand dollars higher than the next lowest bid I will add that but as we look at the dollar amounts uh, both of those bids exceed the two hundred and forty thousand dollars that had been allocated for the eight police vehicles what we propose so that we can stay within that two hundred and forty thousand dollar limit would be to pay for the equipment that is placed within those patrol cars with a federal no match local law enforcement um, block grant um, and so what we would have is in the case of Raleigh two hundred and thirty thousand six hundred and eighty dollars uh, of fleet management monies dedicated to the purchase of those eight vehicles the additional thirty seven thousand three hundred and twenty eight dollars would be paid for by the federal block grant uh, those are legitimate purchases within the parameters of the federal guidelines uh, that way we stay within budget and purchase what we believe is uh, clearly the best vehicle for our purposes uh, to keep our officers the safest and the community the safest um, an additional problem that was presented without notice was a March 15th deadline imposed by Chevrolet that says we will not accept any orders after March 15th uh, we didn't know of that deadline until about the same time as the bids at the specs were disseminated second week of February uh, that caused us to expedite everything that we did and that is why we are asking that the rules be suspended tonight uh, and a third reading occur and I'd be happy to answer any questions thank you chief um, as the sponsor uh, councilman Harvey thank you mayor I would ask that we suspend the rules to speed up the ordering of these uh, are there uh, are there any objections from more than two council members seeing none the rules are hereby suspended on 2011-161 and we'll have third reading please an ordinance of the city of Jefferson Missouri authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Riley Chevrolet Incorporated for the purchase of police de department motor vehicles uh, chief Schrader thanks for that detailed explanation any uh, questions of chief Councilman Scrivener yeah. uh, chief <coughs> uh, thank you again uh, as the mayor said thanks for the detailed explanation it does raise one question in my mind the uh, I've, this is the second time I heard it and I guess it's really the first time I picked up on it but the the two hundred and forty thousand dollars that had been allocated uh, is requiring you to uh, take about thirty six thousand from a block grant what would you have funded with that block grant if you weren't using it on this is there something that you're having to shift priorities on or or had had that you committed that money to something else previously yes a city administrator asked that very question and uh, we we're comfortable that as we prioritize our needs and we look to the future for and to other resources that this is the best application of those funds the things that we can purchase or are our needs presently are addressed in both sales tax e and sales tax f and additionally the block grant is an annual formula grant awarded to local municipalities so that each year we will receive approximately those amount of funds there was a windfall year a couple of years ago of a significantly higher amount but our needs are presently being met and considering the importance of this purchase um, we're very comfortable that uh, this is the proper route to, to go follow up good councilman scrutiner uh, so then l let's say that a similar amount 
normally these the expense of vehicles doesn't go down it may not go up a significant amount but it does probably would be as high next year would you anticipate then in the budgeting process next year uh, attempting to have 270,000 allocated or 276 or 280,000 allocated and then use that block grant for something else next year would that be your your approach you think well we have two options and one is as in the past for well forever as far as I know and in other municipalities in which I've worked the equipment was typically purchased separately from the cars we thought this was a more economical way of of going and so this is the second year we've done that we could revert to purchasing equipment uh, in a, from a from a separate resource and not including it in the vehicle purchase that of course would immediately lower the amount from the fleet fund um, or we could through discussions through the budget process this summer um, also ask for uh, an increase in that amount uh, we don't make that decision but we can provide you options uh, as to how to pay for those cars and there certainly are several okay all right thank you any other uh, comments or questions for chief schrader seeing none uh council uh debate amongst yourselves seeing none we'll have roll call please carol aye harvey aye Coon? Aye. Looper? Aye. Hope? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Weber? Aye. Bray? Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to uh, bills pending, uh, we'll have third reading of 2011-150. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Advanced Public Safety Incorporated for electronic citation system for the Central Missouri Regional Justice Information System. Chief Schrader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the council knows, I've been before the council many times over the last uh, two, two and a half years, uh, requesting various purchases or the authority to purchase various types of equipment on behalf of approximately 15 or 16 cities and counties in mid Missouri. Um, that is because it was a three year federal grant program. We've been successful in securing. Um, probably three and a half million dollars for central Missouri uh, this is another step in that process many times we request authority to purchase equipment on behalf of all those cities and counties or many of those cities and counties in this case this authorizes us to purchase an electronic ticketing system for the Jefferson City Police Department uh, that's um, we manage the grant and that's why I come before you uh, often as we as we take this um, a step at a time as you can see it uh, the price of that electronic ticketing system is $174,084 it provides for an increase in accuracy and efficiency um, and I can I can offer a layman's explanation of the of the technology that we use but basically rather than handwriting a ticket uh, it's all done on the mobile data terminals in their respective police cars and then electronically sent to our record section and eventually electronically sent to the court system okay any questions for chief on 2011-150 uh, any debate by the council uh, seeing none roll call please Harvey aye Kuhn aye Lubert aye Pope aye Schulte aye Scrivener aye Weber? Aye. Bray? Aye. Carroll? Aye. Motion passes. Now we'll have third reading of 2011-152. An ordinance amending Chapter 17, Licenses, Taxation, Miscellaneous, Section 17-24, Delinquent Licenses of the Code of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, by adding a new subparagraph B pertaining to penalties for businesses which operate without a business license. Steve Schleter, welcome Thank back. You, Mayor. Uh, this bill would authorize instituting a penalty for businesses that operate uh, for longer than 30 days without a bus valid business license. It gives the discretion of going up to a fine of a penalty of $500. Okay, any questions to Steve on uh, 152? Seeing none, cancel debate. Roll call, please. Coon? Aye. Lubert? Aye. Pope? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scribner? Aye. Weber? Aye. Bray? Aye. 
Carroll. Aye. Harvey. Aye. Motion passes. Now we'll have third reading of 2011-153. An ordinance amending Chapter 17, Licenses, Taxation, and Miscellaneous Business Regulations of the Code of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, by the addition of a new Section 17-33, providing for business license revocation for certain after-hours activities. Mr. Hilbert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and this is the bill that Mr. Trapp spoke about. And I kind of went over it, I think, fairly thoroughly last time, so maybe I'll just address Mr. Trapp's concerns. Um, I'll start again by saying that the, the, this bill started months before any, there were any issues with club motivation. It started back when uh, College Complex was there in that same location. Uh, at that time, there were a number of issues. Uh, drinking on the premises was certainly prevalent. Drugs on the premises were certainly prevalent. Fights were a major problem. So at that time, uh, code enforcement, uh, fire department, PD, sat down with myself and over the, a number of months discussed the issues, how we can make it better, how we can make it safer. And the question is, well, what was the problem we were trying to address? Well, you got a large group of people in the middle of the night packed together. And in, in the college complex's case, they were packed very tightly, far in excess of the fire code. When the firemen would go up and knock and say, hey, uh, you know, we need to count heads, they would be stalled. People would be shoved out the back. It was, it was a problem. Uh, but when you look at the issue, and of course the crime, that matter, but when you look at the issue, the question is, is it unique to that business or is it unique, or, or would it be the same for any business anywhere operating that same, com that same time frame with that number of people? So what we look to do is to say, what are the conditions we're trying to fix? Would it apply to a club motivation, a college complex? It certainly would. Could it apply to a G2 gallery if they decide to stay open? It certainly would. So the question I was most commonly asked is, what other businesses are there other than club motivation? And I continue to answer, and I'll still answer, I don't know. Because any of these businesses that have a, a gathering assembly location could decide that operate in the middle of the night, have after hours parties, uh, you know, some for, or for any number of reasons. So, uh, you know, it certainly, club motivation certainly is impacted by this. Are they the only ones? Absolutely not. Are they the target of it? I don't think they're the target of anything. I think uh, the the problems that their predecessor provide, and certainly there have been some issues with club motivation as well, as you all have read in the paper and such, that do need to be addressed. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, I, I certainly agree with Mr. Trapp that A and B are things that everyone should follow. They do have to comply with the fire code. They do have to let the firemen in. Uh, they do have to consent uh, in a timely fashion. What's the difference between this and any other bill we've got? Well, now these things are tied to a business code, to a business license. So if they fail to allow the firemen in, if they jam too many people in and they don't abide by the fire code and they cause a fire hazard or, or a life safety hazard, then yeah, their business will be on the hook and I'm definitely interested in standing up for that clause. With reference to employees who know or should have known about alcohol or drugs, I think Mr. Trapp is well aware that that's a pretty common legal term, knows or should have known. The, question, the, the operative uh, issue there is you can't be willfully blind. At club motivation, what would happen is that, uh, I'm sorry, club uh, college complex, what would happen is they would have their cups and they would uh, go outside and they'd fill up with liquor and they'd go inside and they'd drink and, and some other things would go on inside. So were they selling liquor? No. Were they allowing liquor on the premises? Yes. That's a vi that would be a violation of the liquor license, the uh, liquor code. Is you gotta have, you got to have a liquor license to allow liquor on your premises. Um, what they would do is they didn't have a liquor license, so they would just let people come in and out as long as, well, I'm sorry, let me back up because I didn't quite make the point. The uh, liquor license requires you to close at 1.30. So they wouldn't have a liquor license so they could stay open all night. Well, that was fine, except for they would allow liquor on the premises. And col uh, club uh, mo uh, college complex would say, well, you know, w we didn't know they, were, they were had liquor in. Well, that was, of course, absurd because they were drinking all over the place. Is that a... Uh, is that a problem in, in club motivation? Well, I don't know. I'm not an officer. Uh, I'm not with the, the PD hasn't told me that. Uh, but certainly it applies the same as it would anywhere else. If you're not allowed to have liquor on a premises, you can't be willfully blind about it. So if you know or should have known, uh, you're, you're on the hook. The question about failing to have permanent lighting, and Mr. Trapp indicates he doesn't know what that means. Well, uh, that would be a question for Mr. Barron, who can explain very easily, uh, if you want to sit down with him, what lighting requirements are required for a business. Why is that there? Well, I believe it was Ron Davenport who suggested 
you can't have people there in the middle of the night and not have some lighting so that when the fire breaks out, they got to be able to see where to go. They got to be able to get out. And I really don't think that uh, Mr. Trapp would would uh, object to required lighting if he understood uh, how it's applied. Fails to properly control the customers. That is a new one, uh, and that is a copy straight out of the fire uh, liquor license uh, liquor code that says you have to control your customers. We've had numerous. Um, liquor license establishments get licenses suspended or revoked because they couldn't control their customers. Uh, and the staff's opinion is that if you're going to allow a huge gathering in the middle of the night, then you better be able to control your customers. Do you have to have a, a, a police force, uh, your own private police force? You don't have to if you can control your customers. If you can't, you better get one. Uh, the staff believes very strongly that that's a very important safety issue. Uh, there is a typographical error in F, so if you're so inclined to pass this tonight, I'd ask that you uh, move to amend the third sentence in F to delete the word liquor. Now, the reason it's there is it was, it was that we copied it straight out of the liquor license, so this would impose the same uh, obligations on a uh, business open between 1.30 and 4, as is required by a liquor license holder, and that was just typographical error. So I'm glad to answer any questions or that you might have. Okay. Councilman Kuhn, are you going to bring up an amendment? No, I just want to ask one question. Okay, go ahead, sir. What was the establishment that was in the paper recently where they had some kind of shooting or something there and our police officers showed up and somebody turned the lights out? What establishment was that? Well, uh, that was club motivation. Who turned the lights out? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Police chief might know. Captain Shoemaker might know. Chief, would you do you want to answer that question here, or is there an investigation that's going on? Or? I, d I defer to the particular division commander whose officers responded to that call, uh, so that I, so that we're accurate. Captain Shoemaker, if you could speak into a microphone, please. I'm just curious if we know who turned the lights out. Was it uh, employees of the club, or uh, just folks running around, or? Um, it's my understanding that from the reports that I received that the manager of the club um, told the officers it was time to turn the lights out and they needed to leave while they were investigating an assault from within the business. Yes, sir. Uh, wasn't there somebody shot that night? Was there any cooperation on trying to identify the shooter or uh, any help with the police on that one? I know we responded to a disturbance at that location and there were shots fired call, but I don't believe we received cooperation from the persons that were in attendance at the club that evening, meaning the patrons in particular. Uh, I can't to refer to specifics without reviewing the report accurately first, however. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Captain. Okay, uh, other questions of staff? Uh, Councilman Lubert. I suppose what I have to say is more of a comment. Uh, if a person wants to run a business where there are uh, an accumulator or a massing of people, maybe not massing, but an accumulation of people, they ought to have enough of their own security forces on hand to take care of their business. So I don't think it's right for a business to bring a bunch of people together and then depend on the city police force to uh, more or less provide security. That, that should be their own private business. Hey, Councilman Lubert. Uh, Councilman Scrivener. Uh, I think uh, we've been accused of targeting a business so I guess I want to uh, uh, make my comments relative to this bill and I think you've you've explained this but I guess I want to reiterate that there there may only be one business in town right now I don't know but there may only be one that this would apply to I don't know if that's the case or not but certainly this is a large city and it is a city that is a a vibrant and active city where where their businesses uh, uh, come and go people apply for licenses uh, uh, you may today have one business of a certain type and tomorrow you might have th uh, three or four new businesses and I think it uh, what we're doing here with this particular uh, ordinance is we're getting out in front of the curve if you will and there are probably a lot of citizens that might say we're way way behind the curve because we uh, maybe should have done something sooner 
and perhaps we wouldn't have had some of the issues that we've seen uh, reported in the paper. But whether that's the case or not, this ordinance has nothing at all to do with an individual business. It has to do with creating a, a, a safe atmosphere for, for people to gather uh, within the codes and, and uh, laws of this city. And uh, uh, that's what we're all about. We're about public safety and, and creating uh, a safety for our citizens. And so um, uh, just because there's only one business that might that it might apply to uh, certainly has nothing to do with with uh, the need for this ordinance or the lack of need for this ordinance. Councilman Scriver, thank you. Um, other comments or questions? Uh, I guess this, is this questions for staff or comment? Councilman Bray. This ordinance would apply to any present and future businesses operating between 130 and 4? Yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor, may I offer an amendment at this time? Yes, sir, Councilman Bray. I would make offer an amendment to delete the word liquor from item, un, uh, item F. It's been moved and seconded that we leave out the word liquor. Is that correct, Ralph, in that the particular word liquor, area? Yeah, the, the word liquor occurs once under F. Okay. Discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll now vote on the amendment. Uh, roll call, please. Bray? Aye. Carroll? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Coon? Aye. Lubert? Aye. Hope. Aye. Schulte. Aye. Scrivener. Aye. Weber. Aye. Okay, we will now be discussing 2011-153 as amended. Uh, continue discussing. Uh, who's got a question or comment? Uh, Councilman uh, Bob Weber. Uh, the point was brought up about uh, adjacent premises. I realize that could be difficult. What drew, uh, how can we justify adjacent premises that are not owned or controlled by the operator sure and again that in my mind that goes back to knows or should have known uh, so if they're aware that someone's right across the street and they see the person bringing in drugs or alcohol they just can't be willfully blind to that fact and I guess since I've got the mic I'll make one other point uh, I, I don't see that this prevents club motivation from operating as they do now I mean example this past weekend they must have had a good weekend and everything went smoothly and I think they can do all these things and still run the business just the way they want to so I kind of used your question to go off on my own little tangent okay councilman Scrivener oh, thanks Bob one other thing that uh, I guess that I had a question about is the requirement to report uh, how was that language developed and and where what are other examples that you might be aware of where a business owner might be required to report uh, some other some activity which would be illegal because having liquor on the premise would be illegal drugs would be illegal so are there other requirements in either our city's ordinances or in uh, state statutes where someone's required to report in that fashion it's it is very similar and very closely tied to a liquor to the liquor law uh, you, you have a higher obligation of reporting you're held to a much higher standard than a standard business for a liquor consumption for the privilege of selling liquor in Missouri and what the staff looks at is that we think that if you're going to operate a business then uh, where you you got a large group of people in the middle of the night uh, then you're going to be held a little higher standard not quite to the standard of, of a liquor establishment but you're going to be getting close because for all intents and purposes a bar is a bunch of people get together to have fun and sometimes that can get a little too rowdy and you got the same potential problem with uh, after hours clubs or anybody who wants to get a bunch of people together in the middle of the night Yes, sir, Councilman Scribner, go ahead. Is there a different obligation for someone that is operating a business of this sort than might be imposed upon, uh, say, the Capitol Plaza? I'm going to use that name because it's a, a place where someone might have a large group. Now, I know they have a liquor license, and so they can't sell liquor after 1.30, but can right. they still make their... Uh, meeting rooms available to a group after one sure they absolutely could and that was one of the issues uh, hotels are, are a potential uh, area where this could happen they could rent out a, a room to the public their liquor license would require them to be closed by 130 
but if they uh, uh, if they could have their liquor premises carved out because a certain area could be liquor licensed and a certain area may not. So if they wanted to, they may have a large area open to the public uh, to lease that out. Uh, yeah, so they would certainly have the same obligations. But but there would be a di I'm assuming there would be a different o a standard applied or a different obligation for a business that rents a room than a business that has the general public coming in ones yes. and twos and, and groups if coming in and leaving as as they choose to. That's not really leasing your facility or renting a room. That that's making your business available with you actually there to supervise and, and actually there to be to run the business and provide soft drinks or whatever that's correct if the trigger here is that it's open to the public so anybody can show up a hotel might rent out a private room for a private party and they wouldn't necessarily be covered by this although you know again these businesses still have to uh, abide by the fire code and and, uh, and that type of that type of obligation okay thank you Okay, any uh, more questions or comments on 2011-153? Dr. Pope. I don't necessarily want to make this comment, but I believe that uh, <coughs> the comments of Mr. Trapp require one of us to make this comment. Uh, Jefferson City has a long history of tolerance and good faith with one another. And uh, this issue came up purely as a public safety issue. It came through public safety. This is a concern for citizen safety. Mr. Trapp made the accusation that this bordered on a racial intention. And I'm here to tell you that he, in my opinion, only he made that accusation. And I don't believe anyone else of our citizen constituents would make that accusation and I am assuming that only he made that accusation and not the rest of the audience okay thank you Dr. Pope any other comments uh, seeing no other comments um, well, roll call on 2011-153 as amended Lubert aye Pope aye Schulte aye Scribner? Aye. Weber? Aye. Bray? Aye. Carroll? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Kuhn? Aye. Motion passes. Now we'll have third reading of 2011-154. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri providing for the extension of the city limits of the City of Jefferson, Missouri by annexing and including unincorporated real property located in the county of Cole, state of Missouri, lying generally west of the present city limits referred to as the Meadows by the Club area and authorizing an election to approve the extension of the city limits through annexation. Nathan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this ordinance approves the plan of intent which sets forth the city of Jefferson's intent to annex the area that we've referred to as Meadows by the Club which is generally located on the western edge of Jefferson City. It, uh, the plan of intent has been distributed. It describes what the area is, makes a finding that this area is contiguous, and uh, uh, puts the matter before a vote of the people. And I believe that is scheduled for August of... Uh, August of 2012 yes although as I'm looking at the ordinance here um, the ordinance with the annexation will become effective November 1st 2012 the proposition actually does and as I'm sitting here looking it needs to be amended because it says that it would uh, it says it's enacted April 2nd 2012 which that actually should be March the 5th 2012 because they're enacting it tonight okay any other comments uh, for Nathan excuse me yes sir does that require any kind of action to change that date or yes I think we need to do an amendment um, and I, I apologize I didn't notice that till I just 
I've looked at this a hundred times and never saw it, but um, I think we anticipated it was going to be enacted on a, on a different date. And uh, it's just the, the proposition that goes in front of the voters. So it's not actually, what happens with an annexation is we declare it to be annexed, but that doesn't become effective until it's approved by the voters. So the day that we enacted that would be today, March the 5th, 2012, not April 2nd, 2012. So, so the, the amendment should be that, that the uh, uh, March or April the 12th be stricken and March the 5th substituted? Correct. Actually, it would say uh, uh, from April the 2nd to March the 5th would be the amendment so so the, so I would like to offer an amendment with that we strike April the 2nd and uh, replace it with March the 5th okay is there a second okay Drew <coughs> agree okay uh, we will now vote on is there any uh, discussion about the amendment seeing none roll call please gray aye Carol aye Harvey? Aye. Kuhn? Aye. Lubert? Aye. Pope? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Weber? Aye. Okay, we'll now vote on 2011-154 uh, with the different wording included uh, for March the 5th. Uh, any other explanation, uh, Nathan? No, I would just say that uh, we've had a number of public hearings on this and we'll continue to meet with the people in the area and uh, we'll report back any concerns to you that they might have but so far we've received a very positive response from the affected area okay any other questions seeing none um well, roll call please pope aye schulte aye scrivener aye weber aye bray aye carroll aye harvey aye coon aye lubert aye all right motion passes next we'll move on to the informal calendar 2011-135 uh, this is sponsored by councilman rich coon uh, mr coon what say you i would like to uh, leave it on the informal calendar for one more session please okay uh, any uh, problems with that uh, from other members of the council seeing none uh, we'll move on to resolutions we've already talked about those uh, know that presentations tonight are under 18 uh, any council or staff uh, discussion of presentation topics Seeing none, anything under uh, 20 through 22 by any council members? Seeing none, we are officially adjourned. Uh, thanks for watching and attending. Have a good night and drive home safely.